imagine how hard it would be to travel on a 12-hour flight with a sore throat and high fever, while being squeezed in one of those impossible to fit any comfortable posture economy class seats. I was trying to actually accept this reality on my way home from Cambridge to Shanghai on a winter day in 2013. I know this is not as hard as all these problems you're trying to solve, but still, on that day, I was very sick, and I had already suffered a three-hour bus trip from Cambridge to Heathrow Airport. And the bus was stuck in heavy traffic, so I was lucky enough to be able to reach the check-in desk before it closed, only to be told I was allocated the last available seat of the last row. OK, that's fine. And then it was my turn to go through the gate during boarding time. And the air hostess spent a little more time checking my boarding pass. And then she went away with my boarding pass, even though she gave back my passport. And five minutes later, she came back and she ushered me away from the boarding queue. I was told that they had sold out all the tickets, and the seat I got did not really exist. I mean, what? <laughs> so while I was processing this terrible piece of information, she continued to make it up for me, to make it up for me. They found me an empty seat in the first class. I mean, first class. So guess what? Of course, this worst possible journey turned into the best flight experience ever. I had a sound sleep uh, accompanied by some delicate cuisine, fresh fruits, some genuine Chinese tea, which may have contributed to my quick recovery. So you see, amazing things happen in life. Has it ever happened to you? Yes? No? No? Um, so don't worry if it hasn't yet, OK? So just, just wait patiently and embrace the uncertainty and let life surprise you, OK? Um, yeah, that's basically my talk today. Bye. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm joking, OK? Um, of course, I hope this is true. I hope I can tell you it's that simple. I hope I could tell you, don't worry, chill out, and amazing things will just pop up. But you all know it's not true, right? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a very bad liar, so the first class experience is not made up. It is true. Um, but I think about it, it only happened once in my life so far. I hope it will happen more often. Um, yeah, but in 2013, um, that same year, an another artist, um, the artist Shali Xue, she also had a roller coaster experience, though we were riding towards totally opposite direction. In 2012, the previous year, Shali finished an artwork called Angel is Waiting. She spent more than two years working on this piece, and most excitingly, she was dedicating the piece to her newborn daughter. And in 2013, this piece was selected to be included in the Shanghai Museum of Glass as one of the exhibits of the permanent collection. So great news for Shelley. Until, um, yeah, so this is the piece Angel is Waiting, a beautifully crafted glass artwork. But on September the 7th, 2013, among the many noises that visitors contributed to the museum, an upsetting sound of glass falling on the ground echoed in the main gallery. And the museum staff was shocked when they found out what had happened. So basically, two kids broke into the bar and they started to shake the, left end, uh, the lower end of the left wing. And it took them several seconds, but finally they managed to tear off one big chunk of that wing. And worst, while they were doing this, their parents were busy filming this whole process, and they did not make any effort to stop them. This is also a true story. So, um, if you were Shelley, how would you feel? Angry, sad, frustrated, helpless, what would you do? Ask the museum to pay for the damage? How would you decide on the price of this precious artwork? Would any financial compensation actually solve the problem? Well, no, right? So, what does Shelley do? 
think about it, she was trying to think this terrible tragedy happened. And together with the museum staff, they made a very unique decision. They decided to just display this artwork as it was. And now if you visit the Shanghai Museum of Glass, you will be able to see this broken piece of art renamed Broken. Accompanied by this 10 second video clip showing how these two, two kids actually <laughs> managed to break it. <laughs> and being at my talk today saves you around three minutes to actually read the label. But think about it, the incident of this um, thing at the Shanghai Museum of Glass, it might be as rare as the chance of being upgraded from economy class to first class, right? Um, but we often find ourselves in similar situations. Accidents happen and unpleasant scenarios occur, unexpected circumstances arise, and it is human nature to just get angry, to feel hurt, or simply to try to unleash our anger, or just complain, why has life been so unfair to me? That is because we often look at this world with the lens, what is it? What do I have? What is it? It is a failure. What is it? It is bad luck. What is it? It is a second prize, not first prize. What do I have? Not much money, not much time to have fun. What do I have? A grade that I'm not so proud of. What do I have? Um, a terrible teammate. And uh, so we kidnap our own creativity with these questions, and we bury ourselves in misery and sadness with the assistance of these questions. And one exercise I use to try to turn these unpleasant realities into something better is to reframe these questions as, what can I do with it? What could it be? The answer to the what is it question for Shelley is, is very sad. It is a broken and unrepairable piece of artwork um, because she did think about trying to repair it but it was made with this uh, very special one-piece firing process, so it was actually impossible to repair this art piece. Of course, she could accuse the museum for not taking care of her artwork. She could further blame them for sacrificing the luxury of the safety of her artwork just for the luxury of giving visitors the freedom to get closer to displays without glass cases. But instead, she asked, what can I do with it? What could it be? It could be a real life case to communicate to visitors how important it is to actually value and respect the hard work of artists while enjoying their visit. So now it is more than a piece of glass artwork. And what is most empowering about this piece of artwork, I mean the new display called Broken, is that it is authentic. In today's life, we hear too much about these buzzwords around creativity, right? I mean, we crave for innovation, originality, uh, novelty, and we love using these adjectives like radical, revolutionary, cutting edge, groundbreaking, game changing. And let's admit this, we all tend to start to fake creativity to some extent, and we start to pursue creativity for creativity's sake, and it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous because we spend too much time trying to convince ourselves or others of the level of creativity we are aiming for or have achieved, rather than focusing on what we really need to devote ourselves to. It is like companies spending more than they should on creating these commercials to brag about their products, rather than putting money and time into R&D. Commercials can fool some people, but not all. Commercials have their expiry dates, and so does fake creativity. So this brings me to my second point. Among the many theories and frameworks on creativity, authenticity is often neglected. So when Shelley was contemplating this question, what can I do with it? What could it be? She did not really actually display the artwork. That's not the only thing that is most powerful and most creative. What is most creative and powerful about the new display 
is actually the journey that Shelley went. The courage she has developed to lay bare the vulnerability of the material of glass, the vulnerability of man-made objects, and above all, the vulnerability of trust. If Shelley or any other artists, they try to deliberately broke their own artwork to try to deliver the same message, it would only be considered as a pretentious act, right? We need authenticity not just to retain our innocence to spot the emperor's new clothes, but also to actually help ourselves to relieve the undue level of creative anxiety we often experience. If we can start to appreciate that we are not perfect, then we can admit candidly that we are not always creative, and it is fine. And we can say, I don't have anything creative at this moment, but I'm working on my thing. As long as we have this passion for what we love, and as long as we build the resilience to resilience, which is have, have been mentioned by the other talk, so as long as we build this resilience to actually overcome or to live with these challenges, we might just someday create something that is in some way unique and creative. With all these examples we have seen today, I believe it is true. And real life often turn our first class expectations into economy class realities, or maybe worse. But you all know it's much more alive in economy class, right? You find more noises, more dramas, and perhaps more awkward but creative sleeping positions. <laughs> so if, I guess if you ask novelists or screenwriters, nine out of 10 might actually select to set their stories in economy class. I've been there, so I know first class, it's usually dead silence. The chance of being disturbed is much less, but so is the chance of being involved in a random but inspiring chat. A beautifully crafted glass artwork called Angel is waiting is definitely eye-catching and aesthetically pleasing. But a new display broken brings us back to this imperfect human world. Life is filled with accidents, failed attempts, and uncontrollable constraints. You all know these constraints. But if we can, just like what Shelley did, if we can just resist the temptation to make complaints, if we can try viewing this world with the lens, what can I do with it? What could it be? We might have a higher chance to turn accidents into possibilities of creative attempts. And lastly, I want to share with you an excerpt from a poem that I once wrote called Unfinished Stuff. I say, let's drink to this unfinished stuff. Let's toast to the memories they leave us. Let's applaud their short lives. Let's display them, showing why we gave up on them, explaining what they would become if ever finished. To unfinished stuff, to all the possibilities that we have not yet imagined. As I was writing this poem, I was pondering on all these unrealized possibilities and trying to romanticize and celebrate all these unfinished stuff left forgotten or abandoned for all kinds of reasons. The poem itself is finished. But at a collective level, human endeavor to be creative is always in an unfinished state. And I'm glad to see that today, I see a lot of courage, I see a lot of resilience to actually take this unfinished stuff forward and to make the next step. So my last message is, I hope you will keep calm, keep trying, and stay authentic, and adding to what I have heard from today, to also stay caring, stay resilient, and stay happy. Thank you.